Welcome to Das Boat, season three. If you watched the first two seasons, you know what this is all about. We find an old boat, something cheap with scars in history, then pass it around to the most interesting and brave anglers we know and explore some of the country's most unique fisheries. I'm Joe Cermelli, and I'm taking over this show from my boss, Stephen Ranella, this season. Now, I've fished all over the world, but I cut my teeth as an angler here in the Northeast. My mission sounded simple, at least on paper. Find a boat with genuine craftsmanship and intrinsic value and get it seaworthy in a month so it could hit the road while all the best Northeast fisheries were in full swing. There's so many levels of used boat at the Jersey Shore, right? There's boat yards full of these things. There's so many in backyards, and you know it's out there somewhere. I've never seen a center console when they put them cooler seats in. It's got some crunch. It may not look like much, but this 1973 center console Mako is a classic, man. Oh, right, let's see what we got here, man. Its bones are good, even if the deck is rotten, the electrical shot, and it just needs like a ridiculous amount of work before we can put it on the wall. This foot has no idea how lucky it is. Not only is it getting redecked, but like this thing's been sitting for God knows how long, and now it's going to go on one hell of an adventure. Gone under the board. Oh, I can't even believe that just happened. That's what I've been waiting for. There we go. Bigger boat, bigger challenges, bigger water, same bad idea. This is Das Boat Northeast. Cape Charles, Virginia is a quintessential East Shore town. It's like super quaint if you're into lighthouse themed water towers. But scrape away the tourist trappings and you've got a legit old school fishing town right at the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. The bay is best known for its exceptional striper fishing or what they call rock fish here, which is really not a secret at all. But what is, is the world-class cobia fishing that flew under the radar up until just a few years ago. Someone told us that social media is kind of a big deal these days. So we decided to invite two fishing YouTube stars, Bree Andrassi and Jay Siemens, to see how they fared against these migratory brawlers. Only one of them has caught a cobia before, and that was a while ago, so I'm, I'm sure this will be fun. We've also enlisted some local experts and a cobia biologist to help them out. First, though, they're meeting up with Frank to outfit Das Boat for open water sight fishing. Yo, Frank, be nice. Hey, Frank. how you doing? Hey, Frank. Welcome to Cape Charles. Hey, thank you. You didn't sink it? No, 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 no. We did a few things to make it high. How you doing? Hey. Well, this is the baby right here. What's, go what's this all about? That's another story. <laughs> we had a couple issues on the way down. It's really a sound, well-running boat. It's just curious about what you guys are going to do to be able to see these cobia. Yeah, so we want to put a tuna tower on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tuna tower, a rock-solid elevated platform that lets captains of big boats drive from 40 feet in the air and spot marlins and junk. Sorry, Bree, you didn't really mean a tuna tower, just an elevated casting platform. And this painter's ladder should be right on Das Boat budget. So we got a whole right. melange of stuff here. Full noodles, duct tape, WD-40. <laughs> Could this possibly get any safer? No, it breaks. I mean, I don't think so. There we go. I think a little pressure in every direction because these mods run a little long. I got some Pop-Tarts pop for us. <laughs> That's good. Everybody gives resistance about the Pop-Tarts, but they're always all gone. <laughs> Plus, you keep it in your waders, it gets warmed up a little bit. When you're in the industry as long as Frank, anything you say goes. Yeah, 19. Even waiter Pop-Tarts. You're the expert. Doubting me again. No. 
Howdy. Pool noodles are as useful to boaters and anglers as spare I drain like plugs, it. but they're not likely to stop these YouTubers from going ass over tea kettle and suing the shit out of us. <laughs> With the OSHA-approved tower now installed, here's the part where Frank actually gets a little bit of mosh about passing off the boat. From a piece of S laying in this guy's front yard until we bought it and brought it back to life. I'm, actually, it doesn't look that bad, no, does it? Thank you, I'm going to be sad to see this baby go, to be honest with you. I'm going to leave these guys a note because I put a lot into this boat. Please use with love. My blood, sweat, and tears are on it. Literally, that's my blood with an arrow to my blood stain. <laughs> As a very famous person said, my work here is done. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, man. It. Good luck to you guys. Many, you, many Kobe in your future. Thank you. Be careful with that boat. We'll take care <laughs> of it. See ya. Good luck. I got to admit, Frank's revenge on the fishing YouTubers for taking his baby is honestly genius. He knows they have to ride around on a stepladder, mounted on the bow of a 19-foot boat in what's likely to be some rough water. But, I mean, that's the stuff that goes viral, right? But before these two TikTok to the top of that Dollar General casting platform, they're meeting up with local cobia expert and fisheries biologist, Kevin Wang. Morning. Kevin Hi, monitors Kevin. cobia populations for the Virginia Institute of Marine Science. Truth is, people don't know much about this specific population of cobia. Until the internet popularized this sport fishing target around the Chesapeake, very few people paid attention to them in this region. Now, with the help of anglers, biologists, and wildlife managers, studies are aiming to determine how many cobia migrate into Chesapeake Bay, how many of them get caught every year, and figure out where the hell they go in the winter when they migrate back out of the bay. One of the really interesting things about cobia is that the males and the females are really different from each other. That big fish that we saw earlier yeah. that was a big log, yeah, yeah. guaranteed female. Really? Yeah, so the males really don't get much bigger than maybe 45 inches or something. Uh, the really big fish that you're seeing are almost always females. You could call cobia weird looking. I mean, they don't really look like any other game fish and they're often mistaken for sharks when spotted by non-anglers. But while they might seem lazy, they get energetic real quick when you stick a hook in their face. What you got, Kevin? I don't know, let's see if we can get it up here and have a look at it. I think we got our first cobia. Oh man, that's a cool looking fish. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good job. Wow, he's mad. So how big is that? Is that like average size? A little bit above? We are going to get the measurements. Um, write that down here. Cobia are distantly related to, and display similar habits to, remoras, or suckerfish. You know those weird belly-dwelling creatures found migrating alongside whales and sharks? When not migrating, cobia are structure-oriented and often found near buoys, wrecks, or in our case, alongside stingrays and other fish moving around Chesapeake Bay. Let's see how long we got. It's a legal so one, I think. we got a fork of 35 and a half, total of... 40 and a quarter? 40 and a quarter. This is the tag that we're going to put in. So Will that I is... Will actually hear the pinging on it if I... If you put that up against your ear, you're going to hear the pinging. I'm going to make a small incision right here. Okay. And then I'm going to drop this back in the... We, I've got this blue stuff is a medical disinfectant mm -hmm. called chlorhexidine. Um, I'm also going to shove... And this is tag number 2281. This is a little bit of antibiotic ointment. Wow, that's okay. wow. serious. I just put that into the... Um, the abdominal cavity of the fish. And the key thing is you do not want to pull the stitches extremely tight. I'm taking a little fin clip sample as a DNA sample. This is a, just a plastic spaghetti tag that has numbers on it, as well as the telephone number of the Virginia Institute of Marine Science. One of the big mysteries, if you will, of cobia is where they're going in the wintertime. And oh, so yeah. we believe now, on, based on some of the more recent acoustic tagging, it's possible that some of them are going offshore to the shelf break. Oh, okay. 
So we're probably about ready to let this animal go back into the ocean. All right. All right, are we ready? Yep. Okay, so just, just pull that hose out. out. Pull that hose out. Nice. Man, there she goes. Awesome. Swimming away nice and fast. Thanks for showing us. Nice. All right, that was awesome. Fantastic. Citizen science is cool and all, but we're making a fishing YouTube video. The cobia that Bree and Jay caught with Kevin didn't quite capture the sight fishing experience that make people come here to target these fish. Plus, I'm just dying to see one of them get up on that casting tower of death. So here's how this works. The spotter stays on the ladder and keeps an eye out for any dark objects that might be a cobia. Once a target is acquired, the spotter has to tell the driver where to go without taking their eyes off the fish. Is that it? No, that's a ray. This requires a near marital level of communication because the driver then has to hear and understand the spotter's directions well enough to get the boat in position for a cast. I see him, I see him, I see him. neutral, I see neutral, neutral. I see him. Neutral. If all of that goes perfectly, which clearly it isn't, someone still has to make an accurate cast with a live eel while standing on top of a precarious ladder on a moving boat in rough water. So yeah, good luck with all of that. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, he turned for it. Oh, he ate it for sure. For sure he ate it. Fish on. All right. Ooh, <laughs> there we go, Bree. That was so good. Oh, my gosh, Jay, that was You insane. can just see its gills flare when he charged it. Oh, I saw him eat from up here. It was so cool. Amazing. <sighs> Amazing. That was the best eat we've had, for sure. I need to get down, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Get to the back here if you need to work it around the motor. It's got so much resistance. I'm going to... I can get it right here. You ready? Oh. Nice. Now, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> get a quick measure just to know, and then if we cut the hook, we cut the hook. If not, we'll just do it while he's in the net. Bree and Jay are hoping to get one legal sized cobia let's for the down. grill, but to do that, the fish is required to be over 40 inches long. You can touch the head there. Oh, long I thought 38. Oh, he's close. Almost illegal. Uh, let's get this hook out and we'll get a good release on him. Oh, that's a good line. Come on, baby. Oh, he's right on it. Where'd he go? Is he on it? He was right on it. Yes! Hooked up, baby. Oh. Oh. Who put this ladder here? Yes! Oh. He got he's him. in the water. Oh. Dude, nice job. Oh, man. Good job on the boat and the net. <laughs> Rodeo. Oh. It will break your wrist. All right. That is a big fish. Got him down here. All right, 40 inches is the goal to the tip. Oh yeah, 45, 40, 45 and a half, 45. All right, we're gonna cut the hook. That is a keeper, our first legal. Nice job, Oh man, thank you. Oh, we did it, so good. First cobia, so good, that is big. 45 incher. He's not going anywhere. Good. Slaps him. He gets slapped in the face. Nice hands, Jay. See, that's why Canadians don't play football. Despite what Frank says about fishing YouTubers, they actually pulled this off. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. The conditions today, completely different than yesterday. It was so helpful for just that visibility to be able to see the fish, at least from the ladder. Yeah, if we could get the sun behind us, then we're actually seeing the fish at a distance. When we had the right angle, we were seeing fish every, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes probably. Mm -hmm. And as we long as we weren't in the glare, it was, it was, you know, we could see them. Being able to see the fish in a distance is really cool, but the communication part is key. I was so tough because like, 
I always get mad at people in my boat when I'm at the back by the motor and they're facing the other way trying to talk to me. I'm like, turn your face and talk to me. <laughs> but like, you needed to keep your eyes locked on them because if you turn back to talk to me, then you all lose of a sudden the sight. You, you, you lose it and it drops down a little bit or it changes directions and it's like, you need to stay locked on. So, I mean, you yelling. I mean, yeah, you're like, just scream at me. I <laughs> won't be me. offended. I, I won't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the ladder, okay. <laughs> The ladder seemed really stable and it was good, but as soon as you hit the side waves. If you're going the wrong way. <laughs> the 45 degree angle didn't work. You feel that real fast. Because you get the sideways rock. The ladder's not for fighting fish. It is yeah, for yeah. seeing fish and even casting at them was difficult. My first cobia being legal, I, I mean, that's all I wanted. I don't need to catch another fish. This trip, that was, that was everything. And I'm looking forward to eating one. Yeah, me good. too. There's gonna be a lot of meat. I've never, I've never kept a fish that big. Because in freshwater, I'm always keeping smaller walleye or perch. And now it's like a 44 inch. 45 inch fish, I think it's 45 inches was a big one. Like a 45 inch fish, like we will have enough meat to feed a lot of people. I've never cut a fish remotely close to this big. Yeah, and normally I just do. Right along the spine? Right along the spine, yep. Wow, that is a big slab of meat. That's actually not bad, I'm not embarrassed by that. I think we'll take the ribs out and then I'll probably you take skin it off it first? the skin. All right, ribs are out. So now what I would normally do is I'd grab it right by that nub, mm -hmm. and then if your knife is sharp enough, you just move the skin back and forth, and it'll, like you can see it's taking all the red meat, apparently that red meat's the gamey stuff. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's heavier than I thought it'd be. We almost did it. <laughs> Notice that Jay gives Bree the harder side to fillet. I am very curious how this is gonna taste. But also notice that she makes quick work of it. I got most of the dark meat off. Aubrey. Now, Jay might be a humdinger when it comes to frying up some walleyes, but neither of these two have ever cooked a cobia. So they asked local Captain Clint Lassard for some tips on how to prepare it. They take to any flavor you put. My personal favorite is uh, Lowry's lemon and herb or garlic and herb, toss them in house of all tree. That chicken breader, okay? Or the sesame ginger. Put lemon, pepper, garlic, salt, and butter on it and then toss them in Frank's Red Hot. Dip it in ranch dressing, man, that's awesome. You catch all that? Because I'm not sure if we're going to the old country buffet or China buffet. I have grilled very, very few fish in my life. A lot of it is like, a lot is deep fried, so we'll see how this goes, but I did some Googling. It said 400 to 450, so I think the fish is probably good to go if you want to start laying some on. I had it marinating in some Lowry's Lowry. marinade. Is it spicy? It'll have a little kick, I think. All right. <laughs> Those are big <laughs> chunks of fish. So I got some zesty seafood blend that we're gonna try. All right. I'm told you can't really go wrong cooking cobia, so hopefully that holds true, because I don't claim to be any sort of chef. I've never eaten one, so I won't be able to tell you. <laughs> Food blend. All right, let it sit for a couple minutes and we'll flip them. Can I check on this? Because it was like smoking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's probably cooked. We can put a fork that's in it. Let me put a juices, fork in it. Right? Do you want me to just. Yeah, that's yeah. cooked for sure. So, this is your first time eating cobia? First time eating cobia. It looks really good. If I find a bone. I'm blaming you. <laughs> no, that's my <laughs> line. It seems really white and flaky. It's really good. Yeah, I think we did pretty good for grilling our first fish or for one of my first fish. It's moist. It's kind of tastes like dolphin to me. Yeah, like I mentioned before, <laughs> this is like the size of the fish I catch at home. So <laughs> you catch one of these and you're good for a month. Do you think you'll miss Doss Boat? Oh, so many memories. I want to take this ladder home with me. I mean, are you going to miss standing on the ladder? Because you stood on the ladder. Oh, most the ladder? Of the I don't know if I'm going to miss that. <laughs> There's so many memories, though. But uh, I am definitely going to miss this fishery and, and just being able to be out there and find that fish, you know, that needle in the haystack. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah. This has been amazing. And I know Frank signed it, but I think we need to like continue that and make it a tradition of signing the oh, boat. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Man, whoever gets this next. The Kobe's have big lips too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that works. And then sign it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Well, Jay, it's been real. It's been fun. Thanks for fishing with me. Thanks for putting up with me for three days in this crazy boat. Oh, it's been good. <laughs> that was fun. Good memories. On the next episode of Das Boat, we're headed to the swamp. And by swamp, I mean Washington, D.C., where we'll hand this rig off to Meat Eater's own chef Kevin Gillespie and kayak fishing pro Christine Fisher so they can sample the flavors of the invasive species seen on the Potomac River. <laughs> <laughs>